So why did I quit being a scuba diving instructor? It's the dream job after all. Lying on a beach, going diving every day, seeing amazing marine life, diving with humpback whales and turtles and dolphins. But is it everything that it's cracked out to be? Is it a job that you should consider? These are just some of the things I wanna get into in this video. I became a scuba diving instructor back in 2013 when I was 18 years old and 10 months. Now I didn't do it full time, I worked at go to Brisbane for about four and a half years where I worked on weekends while I studied at university. After this time I went to Cambodia where I worked for about four months and then moved over to the Comoros where I had the most amazing magical time for eight months. Is it the best job ever? Yes. Are there downsides? Yes. Am I glad I left? Most definitely. But rather than just telling you the reason I quit diving, I collected a list of all the reasons I know my friends have stopped diving. So you guys have a better idea of what this job encompasses. If you're a diving instructor, let me know down below how long have you been diving? Are you gonna continue doing this? And why potentially have you quit teaching scuba diving? So I think the first and most obvious reason a lot of people stop teaching diving is the lack of money. Scuba diving is not a lucrative career. While some places pay you a day rate in Australia, that can be anywhere from 150 to 250, maybe $300 a day. These days, however, are a bit ambiguous in terms of how many hours you work. Sometimes you're teaching in a classroom, which can be done in six hours, which is a great hourly rate. Other times you're teaching in the pool or in the ocean and all the, all the setup and pack up and clean up is incorporated in that day rate. This means you can potentially be doing as long as 12 to 13 hour days. I know people who've done 14 hour days. That number, that day rate, all of a sudden doesn't look so great. Now, if you're on a liveaboard, which means you stay on the boat during the day and the night, you're basically working 24 hours a day because if you do ever run into a customer, you're in your professional smiling face, ready to help them with any requests they may have. And those day rates, again, they're not looking that great if you divide it by the number of hours you're away from your family working on the boats. Scuba diving on average is not usually an area where you're gonna go up the more experience you have and get higher and higher rates. So a new instructor and an experienced instructor will most likely earn around the same amount of money. Of course, there's areas which do it dependent on commissions, which can be a completely different ballpark. The second reason is scuba diving is extremely tiring on your body. If you're waking up at 5 a.m. lugging tanks to the boat, then setting up all of your gear, helping your students set up all of their gear, teaching them how to do that, going underwater. Some places do as many as five dives a day. Usually it's recommended to do about three, um, especially teaching dives. I believe Patty has a rule of only three official teaching dives a day. It does get a lot. So if you're teaching or then you're guiding as a diving instructor, you're going down to great depths. If you're teaching the open water course, as you guys know, you need to do the CESA, which is the controlled emergency swimming ascent. A lot of diving instructors stop teaching because their bodies just can't necessarily handle it. You need to be quite physically fit and mentally fit to be able to continue diving so many days in a row so many dives a day. Now, not everyone quits, but a lot of people tend to pivot. So they go from teaching at a dive shop where they kind of just have to teach whoever comes through the door to teaching more selectively. So you can have a look at people like Azul Unlimited or Caitlin Murphy, who both have started their online presences and now organize courses and certifications for groups that go directly to them. This allows them to teach how many people they want at a time, teach not as many courses in a year, be more selective, only do it in good weather, I don't know. But it makes you your boss of your diving instructing, but it is definitely moving away from the resort style or highly commercial style um, diving that happens on the Great Barrier Reef, for example. Now, some people I know simply just moved up or around in the dive industry. So potentially if you become a mother or if you become pregnant, you're no longer allowed to dive. We do not know the effects on a fetus, 
when under pressure. So along with expectant mothers, many other diving instructors get tired of being wet all the time and move into office roles or more managerial roles. One of my really good friends who I actually did my PADI instructor course back in 2013 is now head of PADI Asia Pacific. She is doing absolutely amazing work, but now she gets to travel around New Zealand and the Asia Pacific Island, presenting to shops about new materials, changes in the paddy system, giving them acknowledgements for the great work they've done and more. So there's ways to grow within the industry that don't necessarily include teaching students all the time. And then lastly, some people just move out of it because they want a different lifestyle. They don't want to travel all the time. They don't want to live by the ocean anymore. They don't want to get wet. They don't want to have such a physically demanding job. They don't want to be on a boat away from their families, maybe three, four days in a row if they're on a liveaboard. And that kind of brings it on to me. Why did I quit? It was a little bit of all the reasons mentioned, honestly. I was a diving instructor for eight years. I had an incredible adventure. I taught so many wonderful people who are now dive masters and instructors themselves, but I simply wanted to do something a little bit different in my life. I'm extremely passionate as a science educator, running my podcast and teaching high school, believe it or not. I love science and being able to spend more time in the scientific, kind of area was just what was right for me. Diving was an instrumental way of getting into the water, having people fall in love with the ocean, which helped them understand why it's so important we have to protect it. And that is something I'm still passionate about doing today, but it's more through a video lens and in-person classroom teaching rather than in the ocean. If you're considering being an instructor, consider watching my video about everything you need to know about being a scuba diving instructor. And if some of these reasons sound like deal breakers to you, why not have a look how you can get into marine conservation and volunteering to help protect our beautiful planet.